uh, to present to us. But first, we're going to watch a short video that was put together uh, by the City of Malden as available on YouTube. They've made it available to the public. I thought they did a really nice job. You might see somebody you recognize there. So we're going to play it here tonight. Hi, my name is Ron Cochran and I am with Mayor Gary Christensen's office in the city of Malden. And today we're joined by Siobhan Callahan from our Water Utilities Department. She's a water meter specialist. Yeah. And uh, we're here today to talk about a very common issue that residents make us aware of. And that is when you come home and you open up that bill and it is much higher than you ever expected it would be. Um, you know, we're used to using a certain amount of water. We know how much we do, regular showers. And then one month, whammo, we get a thousand dollar water bill and we're shocked. What happened? How did that come about? It happens quite frequently. Um, the most common problem is if you have a leak in the toilet. There's a few ways that you can go yourself and check out what's wrong with it. Oh, okay. So we can sell, we can almost discover what's wrong ourselves because, yes. you know, we were mentioning that, um, you know, the average person may um, immediately, what's your first reaction? Probably call a plumber, right? You know, yeah. something's wrong with my water. And plumbers are quite expensive, right? Yeah, I mean, what can expensive. they, what, what can, what can an average person look to, uh, to be charged if they were to call a plumber to investigate a water leak? At least a few hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot of money. And on top of a thousand dollar water bill, that's probably not so good, right? Not a good idea. So today, what we hear is we're trying to um, empower the residents to take this matter into their own hands and investigate this so that we can prevent uh, any future water bills from being this way and also give you um, a reason, a valid reason to maybe dispute the water bill and we'll get into that a little bit later. So uh, we're going to go down and check out a bathroom that has a leaky toilet so we can give you guys an idea of how this all works. So Siobhan, why don't we get head down okay. and then we'll, uh, we'll see how this all works. Okay, so we're down here in the basement, and uh, it's actually funny. Siobhan had to show me where uh, the water meter was. I didn't know how to find it, actually. Tell me, where should a resident look for for their water meter? Where is it generally located? In most homes, it's located near the front of the house on the street side. Okay, and uh, basically what we're looking at is um, a piece of pipe that runs down in, and actually it's, it's probably a good time to mention this. It doesn't have anything to do with a leak, but if you ever had any catastrophic water leakage in your house and you didn't know where it was, I mean like a pipe burst or something breaking, th th this is also where you can shut off water you for, for your entire house, the supply, correct? You have two shutoffs, one before and one after the meter. Okay, well that's good to know in case of an emergency. Um, so. What Siobhan was telling me was that there are ways to discover you have a leak without actually looking at any of your uh, sources of water. So you can actually come and read the meter yep. and find out if you actually have a leak. So could Correct. you explain that? How would that work? Okay. First thing you need is a very strong flashlight. If you look at the top of the meter, there are two bars. One of them is a solar panel and the other one will show you the read. If you put the flashlight on top of the solar panel, the read will come up it'll flash back and forth between the rate and the read. Interesting. So um, how would I know what rate the number is? How would I know if there was a leak? Should it normally be steady? Um, you know, would you have to shut off water first? I would go through the house and make sure that no one's using water. When you're sure that no one's using water, you come downstairs and there should be no movement at all. Okay, so if you're living in a, an apartment let's say, you have to make sure that you'd have to, well, if you were the landlord, you'd have to make sure that all your tenants have mm -hmm. uh, complied and they've shut all their water down. Single family, it's obviously a little easier. You go around the house, you look for any sources of water mm -hmm. running, shut them all down, and then you have complete water silence, so to speak, right? Yes. And that is where you get your baseline read mm -hmm. uh, from the water meter to see if you have a leak, correct? Yep. And if you have a constant leak, the number on the read change. Okay, that's good to know. I know that sound. That is the sound of a toilet that's running and I know I have not flushed it. So that's a sign that it's leaking most likely? There's definitely a problem with that toilet. Okay, so um, in the case of what we think of as a leak, so again we've already discovered that we had, or at least, at least we think we have a leak by checking the meter. Now we're coming to the source of where these things could happen. So tell me, what types of leaks can a toilet have and, and how can we address it? Let's start maybe with this one. 
If you could take a look and okay. let me know. We're going to come in and take a look at the back of the table. Sure. You take the cup off. And as you can see, the water level is too high and the water is going into the top of the overflow. This here is a switch, so as the water level comes up, it should shut off. But if it's too high, it'll never shut off and you'll constantly have water going down the overflow. Okay, so if I discover this myself, first thing I'm doing is calling a plumber. You're telling me I don't even have to do that, right? This is something I can adjust myself? Correct. Okay, maybe you could show us how to do that. All right, it's very simple. First thing you have to do is turn this. Okay, I see you're, you're lowering it now. So that has to be a certain number of, is it a little bit below the level of water? Yep, if you lower it to at least half an, hour, a half an inch below the top of the overflow tube, you should be fine. And then it'll stop where it needs to and it won't run. Yep, and that will stop the leak. So leaky toilet issue number one. Solved. Correct. Thank you, Siobhan. Is there another possibility of a leaky toilet? What other things yes, can happen? Yes, um, Sometimes when the seals are not setting right or if they're corroded, then water from the tank will constantly go into the bowl. Okay, will it sound just like the other one or could it even be silent? They call that the silent leak. Okay, yeah, and that's something that we don't know. And again, by the help of our water meter, we've discovered something. So uh, how do we discover that we have this kind of leak? Well, what you can do is go up to City Hall, and on the fifth floor, you can get some of these tablets. At the Water Utilities Department? Correct. They have them, and these are free? Yes. Oh, this is great. So how, do we, uh, how does this work? You open this up. You drop them in the back. Oh, I see. That's going to color our water. Correct. And uh, now how long should this take to color up the water? If you wait several hours and then you check into the bowl, if there's no color at all in the bowl after several hours without flushing the toilet, then you're fine. Okay, so we drop the tab, we let it go a couple hours, come back, check it, and then we see if we have evidence of blue water in the bowl itself. Yeah. Great. So we put the dye in the back of the toilet and we've waited two hours and now we're going to check and see if we've got a leak. So let's take a look okay, here. Take a look. Oh wow. Yeah. So we've got a leak. Now this again is a broken seal and mm -hmm. or broken gasket. Um, what do I do to fix this? Will I probably be calling a plumber at this point? Can I do it myself perhaps? Um, most people would call a plumber and have them change the guts of the toilet. Some people who are handy probably just go to their local home improvement store, buy replacement parts and do it themselves. Okay, yeah, well, after looking at that water bill last month, having it be up over $1,000, I think calling a plumber at this point is not the worst thing in the world, at least to, to mitigate this problem. Um, so, is that, we've wrapped it up, we've talked about one style of leak, which is has to do with the guts of the toilet in the back and mm -hmm. the water level rising. We also talked about broken seal, a broken gasket. Is there anything else? Is that pretty much the source of the leaks? Those are the two sources the toilet will give you. Fantastic. Okay, well we talked about leaky water in your toilet, but also there are other sources of leaks. And one of the most common ones is, is one that we, uh, basically when I was a kid, my mom used to tell me, shut that faucet off. And I really never took her seriously. But boy, when you showed me this card and this reference, I am starting to take that a lot more seriously. We're looking at this chart here and it shows us this typical leak if you want to get a shot. Um, that is generally a leak that you would see if you maybe over tighten your faucet spigot or if you, you know, just carelessly walked away after washing your hands. And uh, looking at this card, that tells me that's probably about one eighth inch diameter stream of water. And this card is telling me over a six month period of time that is going to waste 592,000 gallons of water. That is astonishing. And as we go up the line here, three sixteenths of a stream is at a million. 332,000 and then the whopper one quarter inch of a stream which is probably more about this level right here that's going to get us 2,363,000 gallons of wasted water. Wow. That's a lot of water. That is and it's a lot of money too if you don't take care of this problem. Uh, Siobhan this has been fantastic, knowledgeable. 
Um, I really am excited to show this to the, to the residents of Malden to help them out, to empower them, to take hold of a problem that's common. And uh, if we've helped a few residents out there, fantastic. With Siobhan Callahan from the Water Utilities Department of the City of Malden, my name is Ron Cochran. I'm in Mayor Gary Christensen's office. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now we're going to hear from Siobhan herself, who again is here on her own time as a volunteer. Hi, I am a local water distribution professional, and I'm here to discuss um, some of the ways that you can conserve water. The average person in the average home uses approximately 300 cubic feet per person per month. And if you look at your chair's schedule, if you have several people in a home, you're going to end up you're going to end up having um, the higher rate. So you're going to do the best you can probably to conserve um, water and use less. The, the tips that I gave on the video from Malden have, um, will help dramatically. If you have a leaky toilet, <coughs> your water bill will go up. If you change an old toilet, the older ones I believe are about five gallons every time you flush them. If you get a new low flow toilet, Every time you flush it, it'll be about 1.27 gallons. So that's a dramatic difference, depending on how many times your toilet's flushed. Um, we also have some water conservation information here, um, pamphlets and kits. We have some dye packs, similar to the ones that I use in the toilet. And we have some aerators for your sinks. If, they, um, if you change out to a low flow aerator, you can save some money, um, not a million dollars, but if you change a couple of sinks, you know, maybe twenty, thirty dollars a year. On the other hand, if you change to a low flow shower head, which we have some of those also, um, we will actually give you one of these bags and you can try it out for yourself. If you take this bag and you put it over your shower head that you have now, and time it for about, I think it says five seconds, and then shut it off. It'll tell you how many gallons per minute your shower head has now. And for some of the older shower heads, you can save about $200 per year just changing your shower head and doing nothing else. Um, another thing that I highly recommend, um, besides the water saver toilets and the shower head and aerator, are um, the rain barrels. You can get rain barrels for um, not too much money at this time. Even Lowe's and Home Depot and some of the local hardware stores will sell them. And I know a lot of people are concerned now that you're not going to be able to use the second meter and this will save quite a bit of money. Um, does anyone have any questions or anything? So does Melrose use more than the other towns, like on average, is Melrose high or low? That I'm not sure of. That's probably something um, that I could answer a little bit better, but, but we're, we're somewhat in the, the average. It's hard. You have to uh, look at, uh, and I, I can get a little bit more specific information out to you, um, but a lot of this information is available on the MWRA website also. But we're we're somewhat in the, the average, uh, I think Bob's nodding his head in agreement, um, but it's a matter of making sure that we get, not just to be in the average, we want to try to be in the low end. Um, but some of the ways that we do that, again, are trying to make sure that we stop any leaks that are in the ground. So, um, you know, sometimes we do have the opportunity through the MWRA to bond. Um, but they have no interest loans. Those are still, obviously we're paying for them in some way because the MWRA has to pay that. But that does allow us to do some water improvement, um, to repair pipes under the ground and that thing. So, we, so we're not losing as much money um, or as much water through the pipes. But we're somewhat in the average, uh, but it's important that we do that maintenance part. And then of course, 
that we conserve on our own level of energy. So, so I also heard recently that um, the town of Medfield, they were saying they lose, they figure about 25 to 30 percent of the water is unbuilt. Um, and there's a problem they have. They said the average is, is more like 10 percent for most towns. Would, would we be the same? Like, do we have 10 percent of our water just disappear that goes unbuilt? Uh, I think our I think our percent is a little bit higher. Uh, we do have that from our most recent budget presentation as well, which we call uh, it's unaccounted for water. And that is some of what um, we see what comes into the city and then we see what goes out. And we know that that somewhere along the lines, you know, despite it, it, we're billing people individually, we're metering people individually, um, but some of it some of it does go unaccounted for. And, and that's, you know, could be very well leaks under the ground. Our pipes are, are very old. Many of them are 100 years plus. Um, sometimes the pipes that are actually older sometimes are in better shape. It sort of depends on what they're made out of. Um, you see there's some of these old clay pipes and I think they're actually a little stronger than some of the others that are out there um, that may be a little bit newer. But there's a lot of, a lot of leaks and if you can see how quickly uh, a leak in your sink can turn into wasted water. Just think a leak in the pipe is. Yeah, no, no, I'm just saying because it seems like that seems like a more logical place to attack. You yeah. can say you can save the whole town 1% by finding some of the leaks. Yeah. I mean, it just seems more logical to be going to that. Yeah. Trying to change the, the habits of 26 dollars Yeah. Uh, I, I agree. Uh, we, we have uh, been working on that, but of course, it's limited limited funds to do so and then in the short term you know for individuals that want to change their own household and their own bill then you know if they would, would put this on and let them know what yeah, is out there yeah. but yeah it is it is important definitely but I'll let you keep doing on that's okay um, a lot of cities and towns have, have different amounts of unaccounted for water and that's something that the city um, needs to address itself I'm more talking about things that you can address on your own and kind of take control of your own situation and your and your own bill. Um, hopefully, you know, you can take advantage of some of these things and some of the things that I've, I've talked about and at least keep your bill reasonable. Um, you can't change the rate by doing this. You know, that's more up to the city and how they, you know, find leaks and um, other issues. But you can definitely um, keep an eye on your bill and, and control that. So um, I'm going to have some of these shower heads and, and aerators for anyone who wants them and some information to give out. Anybody else have a question? I just want to add to that. Well, I think I'm not following my trade. But a lot of people, like my wife, will stand at the sink and let the water run and rinse the dishes and then she'll throw them in the dishwasher. Guys, we have to walk before I they were one of these. It'll help a little bit anyway. Yeah. Tell us how does the aerator work? Okay, the aerator works by allowing less water um, per minute to come through with a faucet. It's enough water, you know, to wash your dishes or wash your hands, but um, it's just a uh, less of a flow coming through it, and. Um, with the shower heads, I know that the, the old ones weren't very good. You, you would just spend more time, you know, washing your hair or whatever because you, um, the old shower heads weren't great quality. So I think that someone decided that it's better to make a better quality one so that people actually use them, especially, you know, if you have uh, some properties and you have tenants, you don't want them just changing it out on you. But these do save quite a bit of money. And um, I definitely recommend um, changing out your shower heads and your aerators on your kitchen sinks. 